Well, top stories on the brief at this hour. We begin with the cherry news. Almost two weeks after rolling out its first premium model spirit, Dangote Refinery Limited has recorded another major feat with the lifting of its PMS by well, the sole off-taker that's NMPC Limited from the refinery located in the Bejuleki area of Lagos State. The $20 billion Leki-based facility is equipped with 86 countries, making it possible to load 86 trucks simultaneously. The Minister of Finance and the Coordinating Minister of Economy, Mr. Waledu, who led a federal government delegation to the refinery, is calling on domestic refiners to change the narrative and begin legal export of refined petroleum product. But on the flip side, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NMPCL, says Premier Motor Spirit, also known as Petrol, was bought from Dangote Petroleum Refinery at 898 Naira per litre. Ms. Olufemi Shonae, the Chief Corporate Communications Officer of NMPCL, confirmed the price in a statement yesterday. But in a swift reaction, Dangote Refinery has faulted the claim by NMPC Limited that it loaded petrol from the refinery at 898 Naira per litre. Dangote, in a statement by Anthony Chirjina, was the Group Chief Branding and Communications Officer, described the claims as misleading and mischievous. Now, part of the statement reads, we urge Nigerians to disregard this malicious statement and await a formal announcement on the pricing by the Technical Subcommittee on Naira based crude sales to local refineries appointed by President Bola Tinubu, which will commence on October the 1st, bearing in mind that our current stock of crude was procured in dollars. Staying in that sector of the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap has filed a lawsuit against President Bola Tinubu over what it says is the failure to direct the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited to reverse the apparently unlawful increase in the pump price of petrol and probe the allegations of corruption and mismanagement in NPCL. Joined in the suit as respondents are the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice, Mr. Lassif Fagbemi, and the NPCL. Serap is asking the court to compel President Tinubu to direct the NPCL to reverse the unjust, illegal, unconstitutional, and unreasonable increase in its words in the price of petrol from 845 naira per litre to 600 naira per litre. And over to the humanitarian situation in Borno State. Now, with the state government still counting the cost of impact of a flood, which caused significant damage to the state capital, many residents are urging donors to help in the efforts to rebuild the city. Hundreds of thousands of people were affected by the flooding, which was caused by a damaged part of the Alao Dam in Kondugal local government area in Borno State. And same with the Borno flood, the Nigerian Correctional Service has declared 281 inmates missing from the medium security custodial center, Meiduguri, after the evacuation of inmates by officers of the service with support from sister security agencies. A statement by the service public relations officer, Mr. Abubakar Omar, says the Meiduguri flood brought down the walls of the correctional facilities, including the medium security custodial center, Meiduguri, as well as the staff quarters in the city. However, the statement says a total of seven inmates have been recaptured and returned to custody, while efforts are on to track down the rest and bring them back to safe custody. Well, let's talk about the coming Edo elections. The convener of the National Peace Committee, Bishop Matthew Kuka, is asking candidates and eligible voters in the September 21st election in Edo State to carry out the civic responsibility without violence. Well, Bishop Kuka was speaking as a panelist on election issues and peaceful conduct at the Edo Security Town Hall, organized by Channels Television and its partner, Kimpak Development Initiative at the nation's capital, Abuja. Meanwhile, the police force is reiterating that plans are in top gear to ensure a well-secured election in the state. The Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of training and development, Sir Frank Mba, who was also at the town hall, explains that local vigilantes are not a part of election security and their services are not required during the election. And more stories now. Former President Chief Olusha Gwabasajo, former Head of State General Abdul Salami Abubakar, and General Ali Gusol visited the former Head of State General Ibrahim Babangida at his hilltop residence in Mina, the Niger State capital. All the four elder statesmen held a closed door meeting that lasted for about one hour, after which Chief Obasanjo left Mina around 6 p.m. yesterday. While the essence of the meeting was not disclosed, Chief Obasanjo, in a statement issued in Belkuta on Sunday night, explained that he visited IBB to felicitate with him on his birthday. Well, let's talk uh, more energy. The federal government has commenced the distribution of compressed natural gas conversion kits under the presidential CNG initiative. Some designated locations in Lagos, Kaduna, Oyo, Ogun State, and Abuja 
And this is part of a 10,000 kits allocated for distribution to transport associations within the next one week and part of a 1 million free CNG conversion kits intended for distribution to commercial vehicles across the 36 states and Abuja within the next 18 months. And out of the fight against drug abuse, operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLA, have arrested Annie Badon, your state-based businesswoman uh, and an auto parts dealer over attempts to export consignment of opioids and cocaine to London, United Kingdom and Congo Brazzaville. A statement by the Director of Media and Advocacy of the agency, Mr. Femi Bafemi, says officers of the agency at the export jet of the Martella Mohammed International Airport Lagos intercepted a cargo containing 924 bottles of codeine-based syrup weighing 135 kilograms and 5,250 tablets of ribnol hidden in cartons of foodstuff going to the United Kingdom. The statement adds that the freight agent uh, who presented the cargo for export uh, was arrested and uh, further investigation led to the arrest of another suspect who claimed that his mother sent the consignment to him from Ibana to deliver to the agent. And outside the country, U.S. authorities have confirmed that former President Donald Trump is safe following an apparent assassination attempt at his Florida golf course and a potential suspect is in custody. U.S. media citing unnamed law enforcement officials have named the suspect as Ryan Wesley Ralph, a 58-year-old uh, man who uh, stays in Hawaii. Secret Service agents spotted a barrel of a rifle poking through some bushes, opened fire at him. The FBI said Trump was 300 to 500 yards, that's about 200 to 400 meters away at the time. The incident comes almost exactly two months after a gunman attempted to assassinate Trump at a rally in Pennsylvania, striking his ear. A well, busy weekend for club football across the world after players returned from international break, but Ajax fans are angry that they won't be seeing some action yet, as some of their fixtures have been postponed due to police strikes. The fans set off flares, attacked buildings, and clashed with officers on Sunday in Amsterdam after a demonstration. Images on local media showed Ajax fans grabbing bicycles and barriers and marching towards the police HQ in the Dutch capital before officers intervened to restore order. Well, fans had gathered earlier Sunday to protest that three of the matches had now coincided with police strikes over pensions. So there you have it, the top stories at this hour. Never mind that it's a public holiday here in Nigeria, but what have you been saying?